Today's goal is making sure that your thesis statement is easy for your readers to find. Just to make sure we're on the same page, let's start by defining what a thesis statement is. A thesis statement is the main point of your paper. It is usually a single sentence. It is common in informative, argumentative, compare and contrast, and research papers. Most academic papers have a thesis statement. You probably will not have one if you're writing a narrative, if you're writing a story. Even though a story does have a point, it doesn't have a thesis statement that's one sentence that kind of spells it out the same way that a, a more informative paper does. So if you're writing a story, this stuff doesn't fit as well. But if you're writing like a research paper or a compare contrast or an informative paper, argumentative paper, then you're probably going to want a single sentence thesis statement that gives the main point of your paper. And it is usually located in the first paragraph of your paper. That's the part we're really talking about today. That's sort of the main point of this discussion. Because why does it matter so much where my thesis statement is? And so that's what we really wanna talk about here. Why does location matter? If you've given a main point at some point in your paper, isn't that good enough? But let's step into our reader's shoes for a moment. If they're reading your paper to try to determine if it's going to fit their needs, they don't wanna read half of it before getting there. They want to know early in the paper what it is you're trying to do so that they can know if this is worth their time and if it's gonna answer the questions that they have or give them the information that they need. Think about it a little like going to a restaurant and looking at the menu. You have expectations about what information you're going to find and where it's going to be located on that menu. And if the menu is weird and it doesn't give you the information in the spot you're expecting to see it, you might get frustrated, you might get confused. And we don't want frustrated and confused readers, right? We want them to understand what we're trying to do. We want it to feel clear to them, especially in an academic paper, right? If we're writing an informative essay, we want them to understand what we're trying to inform them about so that they can be focused on that topic all the way through. And so it's really important that we put our thesis statement near the beginning of our paper so that our readers know what they're getting themselves into. So the important thing about figuring out the location of your thesis statement is that if you do need to move your thesis statement, it might require some work to the rest of your paper. So if you locate your thesis statement and you move it to the top, you could just, you know, cut and paste it. That's, that's not complete because now you've left a hole. You've left a hole where the thesis statement used to be and it's probably not smoothly integrated into the new place. So you wanna make sure that you smooth out the place that it was before, you fill in that hole, you smooth out the transitions, and you eliminate any unnecessary filler that was around the new location, smooth out the transition into it, and then you need to go through and make sure that all of the paragraphs in your paper anchor back to that thesis statement. And that might sound like a lot of work, and sometimes it is, but this is a really important part of making sure that your paper makes sense as a whole. And so don't skip this step just because you're like, oh, I feel like I already wrote a thesis statement. Who cares if it's at the end? Because the thesis statement being at the end often means that it took you a long time to know what you wanted to say. And so that might mean that the ideas along the way aren't focused yet either. And so moving our thesis statement up can be the first step to improving the flow of our paper all the way through. And I'm gonna show you an example of that with a, a fake paper that I just wrote to illustrate that. I think that it's easiest to understand what we're talking about when we say making sure our thesis statement is easy to find if we look at an actual draft. So I just wrote up a quick mock draft of, let's say I was doing an informative paper about my own personal experiences with pets to tell you which one I think is the best pet. So if you take a look at my draft here, and we look at my introduction, I say, I've had several pets in my life, from dogs to cats to chickens to goats to chinchillas to hissing cockroaches. Many animals have been part of my family. It's been hard to say goodbye to these little creatures, especially the ones who only live a few years. There have also been some pets that weren't as cuddly or interesting as others. It can be difficult to choose between them because they each have their own unique qualities. I don't know which one I think is the best. So this is common in a rough draft when you're not really sure what you want to say yet, right? So... I would say that this introduction does not really have a thesis statement right now because I haven't figured out my answer to the question. I haven't figured out which, which animal I do think is the best. But by writing about it, I might discover my thesis statement. So let's see what happens here. I have a paragraph about cats 
and their positives and their negatives. I have a paragraph about dogs and their positive and their negatives. I have a paragraph about hamsters and their positives and their negatives. And then I have, I think I found my thesis statement. I said, when I think of all of the pets I've ever had, I think my pet rat was the best, best pet. She was much more social and interactive than a hamster, but she didn't require the space or maintenance of a dog or cat. She was easy to take care of and she was quick to learn tricks. She was also super affectionate and had a great personality. So as you can tell, I've gotten much more confident about my claim because I wrote all of this other stuff that helped me think through it. But this is an example of where my thesis statement not being located at the top is actually an indication that I really need to rework my whole paper a little bit because I didn't know what I wanted to say when I started writing. That does not mean that all of this is useless. I'm going to be able to use a lot of this content, but I need to reframe it around my thesis statement now. So my thesis statement is really, when I think about all of the pets I've ever had, I think my pet rat was the best pet. So I'm going to highlight that. That's my thesis statement. And if I want to make sure it's near the top, I could just cut it and then put it here. But did I really fix the problem? No, because this doesn't even make sense now, right? If I say it can be difficult to choose between them because they each have their own unique qualities, I don't know which one I think is the best. When I think about all the pets I've ever had, I think my pet rat was the best pet. Now I'm contradicting myself, right? I just said I don't know which one's the best, and now I've said that the rat is the best. So I need to not just move the thesis statement, but also change the rest of my draft to match this new focus. So if I come up here and I'm gonna look at my introduction and say, I've had several pets in my life, from dogs to cats to chickens to goats. I probably need to add rats in here, right? Because I didn't even mention that the first time. To rats, to chinchillas, to hissing cockroaches, many animals have been part of my family. Um, this, I end up talking about later when I talk about life expectancy, but it probably doesn't need to be part of my introduction. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that. There have also been some pets that weren't as cuddly or interesting as others. It can be difficult to choose between them because they each have their own unique qualities. I think I can keep that. That's all true, right? When I th But then I took out the part about saying I don't know because now I do know. When I think about all the pets I've ever had, I think my pet rat was the best pet. Now I have a thesis statement that is focused and from the beginning. And it looks like what I want to do is kind of compare each of the options here. So I can I can add a paragraph that says, um, my rat was the best pet, but each of the pets I've had have had their own positives and negatives. Let's take a closer look. Right. And then I can go through and I can kind of connect. This is what I liked about cats. This is what I've liked about dogs. You know, I'm giving the, the positives and negatives of each one. Um, and I kind of end up saying that rats are great because they don't require as much maintenance and they don't require as much work. So I might want to add a little bit of that here. So I might say something like, however, cats can be a lot of work and um, they need a lot of space. You have to clean their litter boxes regularly and they can damage furniture with their claws. If they get outside, they can be hurt or kill wildlife, right? Like I'm just kind of going through and making sure that each of these paragraphs has some negatives that I can bounce off of when I get down into my, my rats part, right? Um, so then I can say something here like the rat didn't have, the rat had a lot of positives and very few of the negatives. She was much more social and interactive than a hamster, but she didn't require the space or maintenance of a dog or cat. She was easy to take care of and she was quick to learn tricks. She was also super affectionate and had a great personality. Overall, the best pet for me is one that is easy to care for, but who has a big personality and can interact with me. The rat is the best of both worlds. She was able to learn to... Um, be a big part of my life as an interactive friend without the um, big 
commitment of space and cleaning that a dog or cat had. Okay, so as you can see, the main thing I want you to take away from this, and this is not an excellent paper yet, right? This is still a little choppy in places. I definitely need to go through and smooth some stuff out, but this is a rough draft. And right now, what I wanted to do with my rough draft was make sure that my thesis statement was in the right place. But as you saw, when I moved my thesis statement up, it didn't just change one thing. It didn't, it wasn't just moving a sentence from the end of the paper to the beginning of the paper. It was also then making sure that all of the rest of the paper was anchored to that thesis statement. So I had to go back back and kind of say, okay, well, what contradicts it up here? What do I need to cut? What is, how do I need to smooth out the transition into it? How do I need to fix the part where I removed it? What do I need to write there instead? And so when you move your thesis statement, it's not just one thing. It's all of those things you have to check and make sure that it fits all around. And that's the big thing I want you to take away from this video is that finding your thesis statement, making sure that it's near the beginning of your paper might require some extra work. It might require um, cutting things that don't belong. It might require smoothing out transitions. It might require adding in more details to your other paragraphs that point back to your thesis statement. And the most important thing I want you to know is that it is okay to not know your thesis statement when you start writing and to need kind of a filler at the beginning and, and write your way into it because we often discover our ideas through the things that we write. But if you do that, you want to go through at the end and really figure out, well, what do I think? I didn't know what I thought when I started writing, but now I do. So how can I move this up and make sure the rest of my paper is focused on it?